Hello, my name is Jeffrey Wishon and I am in the Educational Specialist Program at Kennesaw State University. The title of my capstone project was Evaluating the Effectiveness of Fitnessgram Data Entry when Implemented Using the Minimum Requirements Compared to Biweekly Entry Using the Fitnessgram Application. My main reason for choosing this area of focus for my capstone project is because Fitnessgram is something I have been doing since my first year teaching. In my mind, the minimum requirements did very little to inform the students or their teachers of the needs of each student. I chose to continue with the same training program we had always used, but students in the intervention group tracked their progress using the Fitnessgram application bi-weekly. The purpose of this quantitative study was to determine the effectiveness of the Fitnessgram program when implemented using the minimum required standards of data entry compared to bi-weekly data entry using the Fitnessgram application. The Fitnessgram assessment is a comprehensive educational reporting and promotional tool used to assess physical fitness and physical activity levels in children. Minimum data entry requirements are once per year for each student grades kindergarten through 12. This research study consisted of 46 students grade 9 through 12, 23 students in a control group, and 23 students in the intervention group. It is important to state that both groups of students participated in the same exercise plan. The only difference was that the intervention group used the fitness cream application to track their progress every two weeks throughout the study. When I began reviewing the literature, I was shocked to find that little current research exists in regards to fitness cream effectiveness. This surprised me because this program is used in several states across the United States. As a health teacher, there was one thing I knew to be true. The prevalence of childhood obesity has increased dramatically in the last 40 years. It has been estimated that the prevalence of overweight children and adolescents will almost double by the year 2030 to about 30% overall, and by 2070, over half of the United States children and adolescents will become overweight. The concept for Fitnessgram had its beginning in 1977 when Charles L. Sterling, the Director of Health and Physical Education of the Richardson, Texas School System, recognized school administrators and parents' interest in a physical fitness report card similar to those used in other educational areas. This research led me to discovering the current research on the need for school-based interventions. Recently, school-based interventions have been identified as an excellent setting for promoting weight loss, and healthy lifestyle behaviors. A recent study in New York aimed to analyze changes in weight status, anthropometric measurements, fasting glucose, lipids, blood pressure, and the prevalence of metabolic syndrome, and concluded that a school-based lifestyle intervention led to a decreased prevalence of being overweight or obese in Latino or Latina children aged 6 to 12, and to a striking reduction in the prevalence of the metabolic syndrome in a sample of those children. To date, prevention programs have mostly focused on schools, as schools reach a majority of children and have long-term and in-depth contact with them. These school-based prevention programs have shown changes in behaviors, even if the impact on body weight or body fatness is less evident. Another area of interest my research revealed was the impact students' attitudes had on their performance. Mercier and Silverman conducted a study to determine the impact the students' attitude had on their performance on fitness tests. Students' attitudes towards fitness testing decreased from 9th to 12th grade, which was attributed to repetition of boring activities for which the students do not understand the purpose. They did find that students whose schools participated in the fitness program reported significantly higher cognitive attitudes towards fitness testing than those students whose schools participated in the President's Challenge. While the availability of information directly relative to the effectiveness of the fitness program was unable to be found, my research did provide direction. I knew that childhood obesity is a problem. I learned that school-based fitness testing is shown to be a successful place to conduct programs and that the attitudes of students can negatively affect their performance. I believe the addition of the fitness gram application to help students track their progress would pique their interest because of the technology component. I also believed tracking their progress would encourage them to keep working hard. This quantitative research study used a quasi-experimental design. Quasi-experimental design was chosen because a comparison is being done between a control group and an intervention group to determine the effectiveness of the fitness gram assessment when implemented using minimum data entry requirements for the control group and bi-weekly data entry requirements for the intervention group. This research uses a quasi-experimental design because participants were assigned to two separate personal fitness classes by a scheduling coordinator at the school. 
This research utilizes the quasi-experimental design because the groups will differ in the treatment they receive and potentially in unknown ways. An independent samples t-test was conducted between the control and intervention groups at baseline to determine if a significant difference existed between groups from the outset of the research. I hypothesize that, that there will be a statistically significant difference between the mean scores of both groups, but I was unsure which direction. Each group completed a baseline fitness gram assessment pretest at the beginning of the study, consisting of the sit-ups, push-ups, and sit and reach. Both the control group and the intervention group completed the same physical fitness program. The students in the intervention group completed the fitness gram tests every two weeks and logged their data using the fitness gram application. This allowed them to track their progress and make necessary adjustments to the program should they not make progress. Students in the intervention group had access to bi-weekly data by way of the fitness gram application throughout the study, which allowed them to see their gains. In order to ensure a significant difference did not exist between groups prior to their research study, an independent samples t-test was conducted. Because no significant difference existed at baseline, another independent samples t-test was conducted at the end of the study to determine if a difference existed between the control and intervention groups. Here are the results from the independent samples t-test conducted at baseline. The table above contains the data that derived from the t-test. For sit-ups, the mean of the control group was higher than the intervention group, although a two-tailed independent samples t-test showed the difference was not statistically significant at an alpha value of 0.05. For push-ups, the mean of the control group was lower than the intervention group, although a two-tailed independent samples t-test showed that the difference between groups was not statistically significant at an alpha value of 0.05. For the sit and reach, the mean of the control group was higher than the intervention group, although a two-tailed independent samples t-test showed that the difference was not statistically significant beyond the 0.05 alpha value. Because the p-values of each of these tests were not statistically significant at the 0.05 alpha value, the null hypothesis that a significant difference does not exist between groups cannot be rejected. Because a significant difference did not exist, an independent samples t-test was performed on post-test data to determine if a significant difference existed between groups after the intervention was complete. At the conclusion of the intervention, an independent samples t-test was performed on post-test data between the control and intervention groups. I hypothesize there will be a statistically significant difference in the mean scores of each group but was unsure which direction the difference would be observed. I had no expectation about which group would have the higher mean score, so a two-tailed p-value was used to determine significance. For sit-ups, the mean score of the control group was higher than the intervention group, although a two-tailed independent samples t-test showed the difference was not statistically significant. For push-ups, the mean of the control group was lower than the intervention group, although a two-tailed independent samples t-test showed that the difference between groups was not statistically significant. For the sit and reach, the mean of the control group was higher than the intervention group, although a two-tailed independent samples t-test showed that the difference was not statistically significant. Because the p-values of each of the tests were not significant at the 0.05 alpha value, the null hypothesis that a significant difference does not exist between groups cannot be rejected. The capstone project was a lot of work, but it was work that I enjoyed doing. I know that childhood obesity is an issue that is not going away, and this was a way for me to work to try to find something that could help kids better their health. Unfortunately, my research did not see the results that I hoped it would. There are a few reasons I think I did not see better results. The first reason is the sample size of my research. 46 students is not nearly indicative of the general population, and the law of large numbers states that as sample size grows, its mean will get closer to that of the whole population. Another reason better results were not achieved could be attributed to the length of the intervention. In a fitness intervention, it takes time to achieve the desired results. Future longitudinal studies should be conducted to determine if the same results would have been obtained if the length of the intervention were extended. Finally, the last reason the desired results might not have been achieved was due to the weather. The intervention began in January and ended in March. During that time, the weather was too cold for my classes to use the outdoor training area each day with the exception of three days. Future researchers need to have an adequate inclement weather plan in place before beginning. Overall, this was a great experience. It was definitely not something I was comfortable completing at the beginning, and the scope of the work was a daunting experience, but it is something I am proud I achieved. It has shown me the importance of research and also given me the confidence to conduct future research studies.